What's up guys? I got more Teen Wolf for you. Um, with the newest episode, episode 6 of season 4, which is Orphaned. Uh, really quickly, I want to apologize for the briefless, briefness of the last review. Um, I didn't realize that I was running short on film, and I, and I thought the battery was dying, so uh, I ended that one quickly. But I'm going to try to make up for it by making this one a nice long one. But, um, yeah, so this episode starts off with a flashback to four weeks earlier, before the current events of Kate sleeping in a car, and then she finds a mixtape in there, which, uh, or not a mixtape, a uh, cassette tape, that tells her about how the Hale family, uh, they train their betas to learn control by having, by giving, having them focus on, like, old relics. And so that's, you know, believed to be then at that point what sets her to go kidnap Derek and sets up the first two episodes of the season. Um, and then uh, right after that we go to the present day where her and her berserkers have killed a group of assassins. And so it, uh, we find out that uh, all the assassins have... Uh, had got mixtapes, so all these sets. So it's believed that then the benefactor, whoever he is, who's still unknown, uh, he set up everything. He's, you know, he got Kate to go down to find the location of the vault so that uh, he could rob him. So and that's, a, that's the beginning of the episode. Um, but everything else takes place immediately after the events of the last episode. Uh, Violet is taken, I guess, is arrested by uh, uh, Sheriff Slinsky and Agent McCall, and, uh, before that there's a really brief, like, really cool Agent McCall moment between him and Scott where he's like, you know, oh, I was supposed to be there, and Scott's like, it's okay, it was just a pre-season skirmish, but he's like, but I told you mom I was gonna be there, and I, was, and I wanted to be there, and that was a really cool moment, uh, between them, I, I, I really like that. But we find out that you know, Garrett ran off, and so I guess Violet's arrested, and uh, you hear her inquire that uh, Deputy Parrish's name is Jordan Parrish, and you know, he's on the hit list. So, uh, that was weird. And so, um, but then while searching through Garrett's locker, Scott finds a duffel bag full of money, like with hundreds and stacks of hundreds, and probably thousands of dollars. And so he decides he's going to uh, take that money home. And... That actually sets up this season very nicely, and I'll explain that when I'm done explaining what happens in the episode. So, um, Liam's out for a jog, and he gets, uh, accosted by, uh, Garrett, and then Garrett stabs him with his, uh, Wolvesbane poison blade and puts him in a well, and he uses him as leverage against Scott. You know, he says, uh, you know, Scott, you help me free Violet, and you'll get your beta back. And so, uh, yeah, I'll do all of this part of the episode. Now, again, like other times, I'll go through everybody's story. So, Scott and uh, Garrett then go to try to stop the car that's transporting her, but uh, which also has Scott's dad and Sheriff Stalinski in it, but it turns out that the car is already flipped over when they get there. So Scott and Garrett get out, and Scott finds out that the Berserkers are there. So Garrett, thinking he's a badass, which is pretty funny, he goes up and he's twirling his uh, the cross stick, which has two blades on either end. He's like, yeah, you ain't, you ain't so big, you ain't so tough, and then one comes up behind him and stabs him in the chest. Um, and so Scott falls unconscious because then he's stabbed, but he wakes up at the animal clinic with Deaton and uh, uh, Chris Argent. And so they're, they're, they, so they decide they're going to go after Kate. So they figure out where she is, and they go inside. And um, this is where we start to see a bit of the conflict inside Chris uh, Arjun, which I think is really cool. Of He's battling his old urges of, we hunt those who hunt us, versus his, what his daughter wanted for him, and, and we protect those who cannot protect themselves. And so he almost selfishly just starts firing at Kate and the Berserkers, which causes the Berserkers to attack and him and Scott get their asses kicked until Kate calls them off. And so he apologizes to Scott and he says there's still time to find Liam and 
while all this is going on, Liam's been attempting to climb out of the well. But since he's poisoned by Wolfsbane, he's only got... He doesn't have that much time. So he just howls out, you know, for help. And then Scott hears him and rescues him. And then at the animal clinic, Scott uh, resolves that he's going to try to rescue everybody on the hit list. That nobody else is going to die. Like, that's his new mantra. Alright, so... Another main portion of the episode is follows Derek. So Derek and Styles are trying to cure Brett, who was the beta that uh, Violet almost killed last episode. And so uh, they try to hold him down, but he gets up, so Peter punches him, which kind of is like, so Peter's getting some of his power back, which again, that, I'll bring that up at, when I, uh, at the very end of the episode. And so. Uh, when he comes to after they get the wolf spin out of him, he goes on about the, the sun, the moon, the truth. And it turns out that is a that is a uh, Buddhist proverb, which leads them to Satomi, the uh, werewolf from the flashback episode from 3B, the werewolf that uh, lit Reese on fire with the Molotov. And so they decide they're going to go after her. So Derek gets Malia's help. Because one, Derek can't smell anymore, he's losing his sense of smell. And two, you know, Malia lived in the woods for, what, eight years? For years. And so she knows the woods. And so, they go and they, uh, after some looking, they, they find where the pack is, but it turns out they're all poisoned. They're all dead. But one person is alive and Derek finds, and it's uh, Brayden. So him and Malia rescue her. And then for the other part of the episode, uh, Lydia and Styles are trying to get the third uh, keyword for the hit list. And so they go to Parrish and they're like, uh, yeah, we need to speak to Meredith. So they get their way into Iken House and Meredith's no help because she knows who the benefactor is. And so she just kind of freaks out and just has a mental breakdown. So uh, Lydia and Styles go back to, I guess it's... Styles' house, and they just say, well, Banshees are harbingers of death, so it's like, oh, maybe it's somebody who's going to die. So Lydia just types in a name, and she types in Derek's name, and that's the third cipher key. So, I don't know if that means Derek's gonna die, but who knows? Like, how? It could happen. Um, but yeah, so then they call Eichenhaus, and it turns out, you know, Meredith hung herself, so... Episode, if the episode were to end there, it would end on a very somber note. But at the very end of the episode, we find Kate and the Berserkers hanging out in the sewers, I guess, underneath Beacon Hills. And Peter comes to her, offering to uh, uh, give, teach her control in return for power. Which, I guess, means he's finally going to make the play on the becoming an alpha that he promised at the end of 3A. So, yeah. All in all, this was a very good plot episode, in which it kind of tied the whole season together. Um, I like how well... I don't know if Jeff Davis is just a writing master, but like, how well everything kind of flowed together, kind of naturally. It's like, you know, in ep the episode 117, you know, uh, the younger Derek is, you know, he's going through the this kind of mantra, Alpha, Beta, Omega, and he's going over that, and that's what teaches him control. And then Satomi's pack, uh, he does the sun, the moon, the truth, which is part of a Buddhist proverb. And it's cool because I guess she's Buddhist because she's Japanese. So that's just like really well written to use characters that they already have and whatnot. I thought that was really cool. Um, and also, you know, this season's all about money. You know, the 117 about the ransom money. And everybody's going through financial hard times, you know, in... Uh, the benefactor, Lydia, was freaking out that her her, ma, her mom was selling the boathouse so that they could get the money because they needed the money. You know, Styles has all his bills from Iken House. Uh, Melissa McCall, the electricity, got shut off at her house. So, there's money. And so, money evolved. And so, when Scott, and, you know, takes a duffel bag full of money, you know, you see he's pondering what to do with it. And it's... That's one way that, you know, again, this brings this season together. But then, also just how masterfully so many villains are coming together. You know, there's the Benefactor with 
who knows how many assassins there will be. I mean, they have to kind of introduce a new one because I forgot also Violet. Uh, Kate killed Violet. So, but that's just, you know, and then I guess now Peter is becoming a villain. It's so it seems. Who knows? He might be uh, trying to trick Kate. I don't know. But, um, yeah. Uh, I, I want to keep talking about uh, a couple other things uh, about this episode, which was, you know, there was a rumor floating around that a parent was going to die in this episode, because it's called Orphaned, and so obviously the first choice is Sheriff Stalinsky, because, uh, you know, he's Styles' only parent, so, you know, the fandom freaked out. But then after that moment with uh, Agent McCall, that's who I thought was going to die. I was like, oh, no, because, like, they, they actually sold me on liking him at that moment. I actually started, like, honestly, this episode, I'm like, he's cool. I like him. He's, he's trying to get, you know, on good terms with his son. So I was like, you know what? You're a good guy. I like you. But, uh, yeah, and so, but he, but he did. He didn't die. They didn't, neither him or Sheriff Stalinsky died. It was, you know, yeah. But, uh, also at Comic-Con, the mid-season trailer was shown off, which I think we thought was weird because the sixth episode hadn't come out yet, so this is the earliest they've shown that off. And I just wanted to talk about a couple things from that. Um, you know, I guess the, the evidence of Derek losing his power is kind of true because in one scene, he's seen holding a gun, which is, you know, not very werewolf like of him. Uh, and then... It, more evidence towards the Peter. The, wow, Peter wanted to become an alpha again by seeing him all wolfed out talking to Scott, and he says, "You were my beta first, Scott. It was my bite that changed your life, and my bite that will end it." And so, yeah, and he's all wolfed out. Always beta wolfed out, like he's not the full alpha wolf. But, and it was just cool. And then also, it shows that I guess Scott's becoming more of a werewolf, but he thinks he's becoming more of a monster. So. Like, again, that's more stuff that's really cool that's coming up this season. I just, I really hope that uh, a lot happens this season. I hope the season gets so much better. So, um, I mean, we're just halfway through it. we still got six weeks left of this. So, um, yeah, I guess that's all I have to say. So, uh, yeah, I'll catch you guys later.